Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. This is going to be a casual video because I didn't really prepare for anything for today and actually I wanted to work on this Lenovo small form factor PC that I turned into a two bay NAS but 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 I have got this package and this one is Huanan Chi Epic Motherboard so I'm going to unbox it and I will try to boot it up and have like uh, some sort of a first experience video for this Huanan Chi Epic motherboard. So first of all we need to unbox the motherboard and evaluate the packaging itself since it's not a cheap motherboard. With the Swedish 25% VAT tax and shipping it costed me more than 400 euros. As you can see, this Huanan G H12 Epic motherboard is packed very well. It is wrapped in bubble wrap in double boxes and inside the box itself the motherboard has this protective form layer and then it is also inside an anti-static bag. So I do not expect to have any problems through the transportation. A part of the motherboard inside the box we have one SATA cable and then another SATA cable the IO shield and this IO shield is also padded and seems to be of a premium quality. Then we have the BMC module or the board management control module because I bought the motherboard with the BMC module and we have a user manual. So let's quickly take a look at this user manual and see if it's of any use. The first half of the manual is in Chinese and then the second half is in English. So let's see if we have something useful in the English version. Packing Huanan G-H12D8D motherboard, SATA data cable, IO shield, backplate and a manual. Uh, that's exactly what we have got. Then quick specification, we can see that we have at least some sort of a specification. Huan and Zhi are getting better and better with these manuals. And what I like about this H12 motherboard is that it claims to support AMD Epic 7002 and 7003 CPUs, not the 7001, which were the first gen and which I would honestly avoid. So the RAM, we have eight DIMM slots, which uh, support up to two terabyte of memory, according to the specs, and up to DDR4-3200. Then we have a bunch of I.O., built-in pinout, expansion slots, and so on. Here we also have a diagram. Here we have a little diagram for the front panel buttons and LEDs. So indeed, Huanan G manuals are getting better and better. In addition, we also have description of the PCI Express layout. We have three M.2 slots and we have four PCI Express X16. And all of them are PCI Express 4.0, of course, thanks to the AMD Epic CPUs that support PCI Express 4.0. The Ethernet here is supposed to be 2.5 gigabit and we also have two of them, so that's also very good. Here we also have a CPU installation instructions, which is also very nice because installing AMD Epic CPUs could be pretty tricky, but uh, I think uh, everyone would be able to figure it out. So the manual is available in Chinese and in English, and I have to say that this manual is much better than what I have seen before with Huan Anji motherboards. So good job Huan Anji for writing a somehow useful manual. Finally, let's take out the motherboard itself and see what we have got inside. And here is the beauty. I don't know if this is a placebo effect, but it feels like the PCB is noticeably or significantly thicker than what I had with a LGA 3647 dual socket motherboard. So this one feels much more stable it does not wiggle, it doesn't wobble, and overall feels like a decently made motherboard. Just like any other Chinese motherboard from AliExpress, this one comes without a CMOS battery, which is expected and not a problem. So let's briefly go through the specification of this board and then try to boot it up. 
In terms of specs and features, this seems to be a very well-packed and very well-designed motherboard. The only thing I could complain about is that nowhere I could find a USB Type-C header for the front panel. Other than that, it seems to be a very good option for a workstation or a server. Of course, here we have the AMD SP3 socket for the second and third gen AMD Apex CPUs. Then we have eight DDR4 memory slots, and I really, really hope that we have all eight memory channels populated here, and it's not just four memory channels with the two DIMMs per channel. The VRM over here doesn't really look very inspiring, but it has a fan, so I hope it's gonna be just fine. Over here we have the 24-pin and 8 plus 8-pin power connectors. I actually really like that Huanangi put power connectors over here instead of over here. Then also next to the power connectors we have two 4-pin CPU connectors for the fans and a couple of fan connectors more over here. On this side we have four SATA ports and then we have three U2 ports and I believe these U2 ports, each of them can be converted into four SATA ports or maybe it is even six SATA ports, I don't know. But in general you have plenty of SATA ports. Then here we have a debug LED screen, this is front panel buttons LEDs, a couple more fan connectors, then some tiny headers, I am not entirely sure what it is, maybe something is here for TPM module or something like that. Then we have USB 3.0 for the front panel and this one is 2.0 for the front panel, COM port and this one I believe is audio for the front panel. This uh, slot, which looks like SODIM DDR slot, like from laptops, this one is actually to install BMC or board management module to uh, have some sort of IPMI. Then over here we have one, two, three M.2 slots, and all of them supposed to be PC Express 3 or PC Express 4 X4, and then we have one, two, three, four PC Express X16 slots and all of them are supposed to be PC Express X16 connectivity because the Apex CPUs have shit lots of PC Express lay-ins. While we are here, let's take a quick look at the BMC module itself. So this BMC module looks like this card, very similar to an SODIM memory module and you install it just like an SODIM gently push it in at an angle and then push it down. But first I will test the motherboard without the BMC module to make sure that it actually works and then I will install this BMC module. Actually on the BMC module I can see some white marks on the SPID AST2500 controller, so I'm not sure if that's a problem or not. I hope it's just some leftover of flux or something like that, but uh, I hope this BMC module works. Finally, let's take a look at the rear RU and over here we have VGA output. This VGA output would work only if you have the BMC module installed. Then we have two USB 2, four USB 3. This is the BMC Ethernet port to run IPMI. Again, this one is going to work only if you have the BMC module installed. And these are two two and a half gigabit Ethernet uh, ports. So we have pretty decent connectivity. And unlike many super micro, gigabyte, and other server motherboards that do not have any audio on board, this one has simple audio with the two audio exits: one for speakers and one for microphones. This all sounds good and exciting, but it is nothing if the motherboard doesn't work. So let me get it installed into my test bench and try to boot it up. But first I need a CPU and for the CPU I have to thank one of my subscribers who generously donated me this Epic CPU specifically to test this Huanangi H12 motherboard. This is an AMD Epic 7282, so it's a second gen AMD Epic CPU, and as far as I remember, it has only 16 cores and 32 threads. But this is more than enough to get started with this motherboard, and if the motherboard will be decent, I will try to buy a 32 or even 64 core Epic to try to test it and try to stress test this VRM.
the CPU is installed and I have to say that I like this socket much more than LGA3647 where CPU is not secured inside the socket at all. And actually AMD has a special Torx screwdriver with a torque check so you cannot over tighten these screws and I have this torque screwdriver somewhere but I could not find it right now so I just used a simple screwdriver with a torque head and I used such a very technical and very precise mechanism to measure tension called I feel saw. Now let's hope that I did not screw anything up, install the cooler, add a couple memory sticks and try to boot this thing up. Okey-dokey, everything is connected over here, I have plugged the power supply, I have some memory, I have this gigantic Be Quiet CPU cooler, I have my power button, I skipped the CMOS battery, and I have my old trusty NVIDIA GT710 installed over here. So the monitor is connected, I also connect a keyboard, and here is the monitor. So the only thing left to do is to click the power button over here and click the power button over here and hope for the best. At least the fan is spinning up and let me see what we have at LED indicator. We have some postcodes running on. Let's hope we will get a boot. And let's hope so. one one so it obviously doesn't like something i will give it a few more seconds to stay and try to boot but seems like we are not getting boot at the first try which is a big disappointment <laughs> Well, 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 it's an eternity later, I spent about an hour trying to get it booted and it's already dark in here and I could not get it started. I have tried different memory, I have tried to reseed the CPU several times, I have tried to clean it, it still stuck at the postcode 11, which is called pre-memory CPU initialization. So I suspect that it is either defective CPU or defective motherboard or I don't know, the motherboard just doesn't like the CPU. Of course, I have also tried to look inside the socket to see if there are any damages or any dirt, but the socket seems to be perfectly fine and I have cleaned this CPU, I have reseated it several times, I have tried different memory sticks, nothing. It just stops at postcode 11 and that's it. So what have we learned today? That 100 Epic H12 motherboard feels decent, looks decent, has lots of different features, but it just would not boot up with AMD EPYC 7282. I don't know if it is the CPU's fault, if it's the motherboard's fault, or maybe I'm just so unlucky that all the memory I have tried is not compatible, but I will of course contact Honanjiri and see if the CPU is compatible, I will try to source another CPU and I will try to get this motherboard booted up. If it still doesn't work, well, I will be out of options and I will have to send it back to China. Of course, if you're interested in the follow-up video and in the potential detailed review of the motherboard once I'm able to boot it up, then please subscribe to my channel. And with this I have to say, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope this little unscripted video was kind of okay, and I will see you in the next one.